Today we're going to talk about how to draw a cornucopia. A cornucopia is also called a horn of plenty. It would contain fruit and vegetables that we normally associate with Thanksgiving. This Thanksgiving may be a little different for you. It's a little different for me, but this is temporary. Just know that next year we will all be together again. You'll be able to travel somewhere to see family you may not be able to see this year or your grandparents or whoever it is that you might possibly be missing. You are going to get through this, so am I. We're going to get through it together. Have faith and have fun drawing. Today you're going to learn how to draw a cornucopia in a few easy steps using watercolor, marker, and colored pencil. Or just whatever you have at home. If you have crayons, perfect. But always start your drawing with a number two writing pencil so that we can change our lines if we want to. What is a cornucopia? A cornucopia is also sometimes referred to as a horn of plenty and is a traditional Thanksgiving symbol. So let's start off with learning how to draw a pumpkin, step by step. Start with an oval shape. You'll probably want to practice this on a separate piece of paper. And then you start adding curved lines to that middle oval until you get the pumpkin the shape you want. Also add a stem. I would say the stem is kind of rectangle-ish. And they really don't go, grow straight up and down. They kind of grow to the side and curved, which is what makes pumpkins so interesting. Pumpkins grow in a variety of shapes with curves, lumps, and bumps. It does not have to be smooth and symmetrical. Symmetrical means even on both sides. It does not have to be that way. It doesn't even have to be orange. You are the artist. So I put the cornucopia I painted in the middle of the page just to give you a reference. So you are going to start with your little pumpkin, kind of in the center of your page, but the below the middle of the page. So mine is right here. That's what I mean by centered and below, but it doesn't have to be perfectly centered. So here's my little pumpkin, did the middle oval, drew the sides, built on my pumpkin, as you can see here. Then next, I added more pumpkins. So here's my middle pumpkin, my tiniest one, and I did some overlapping where it appears that the bigger pumpkin this pumpkin, it appears that it's behind the little pumpkin. It's the magic of art, right? And the stem. And then here's our third little pumpkin. Someday I'm gonna get a really nice Mac computer again, so it'll be easier for me to draw on the screen. So there's a third pumpkin. Again, you always want to use your number two pencil, start with the smallest, then add your other pumpkins. All right, also I started the beginning of my cornucopia, which is the shape of a horn, by just drawing a U-shape upside down or a semicircle, however you want to think of it. your cornucopia, I would suggest you separate it into three sections. So the first section, um, I would describe maybe as almost a square shape, ish, sort of. You see what I mean? And then um, in the second section, I would maybe describe it as a rectangle-ish shape. And then you have your curly cue 
on the end. This reminds me of like a scorpion tail. So I've broken it up into three sections. This first section that I described in a square is shape because, think of it, if we drew a square, or maybe more of a rectangle, that would be the shape, but then you just are erasing that part. All right, so then let's add some leaves to our cornucopia right here underneath the pumpkin. Now, if we had lots of time, hours, we could add other things that we eat at Thanksgiving, grapes, corn, or fall things like acorns. You can add whatever you want to your cornucopia. These are just a few suggestions. So I had Sharpies at home, markers, and watercolor markers. I outlined my cornucopia with the watercolor markers, knowing that I would put water on a brush and spread out that color. And you can see that in this picture, how I did that. Again, this all works more efficiently if you have watercolor paper. And you can see I started adding some shading to my pumpkins. So keep adding color. If you're using watercolor, don't use too much water. Or if you are using a marker and a wet paintbrush to spread the color. <clears throat> this is actually my second attempt because I used too much water the first time. I added watercolor to deepen the colors and colored pencil to create texture on the pumpkins and on the cornucopia. My final drawing. I would still like to add color to the negative space, and all this is negative space, and create more shadows. What exactly is negative space? It is the space around and between the image. Using watercolor takes practice and the willingness to let go of control. Remember to let everything dry before you add colored pencil. That takes patience. Sometimes I'm not so good at that part, but I'm working on it. The most important thing is to have fun and don't judge your artwork. Evaluate what you would change or improve. This is how we learn. Have a great day. Remember, don't judge your art yourself or others. Have a great day.